When we talk about biodiversity, essentially we are considering all of the different species of living things on Earth. And when someone like you or I think about animals, there are some usual suspects. We are here at the University of the Yellowstone, so maybe you think about wolves or even bison. I tend to think about these guys. The elephants, rhinos, those last great gigantic mammals of our time. Ecologists tend to call these charismatic megafauna. They're well known, they're cute, they're accessible, and that's great. But how many of you know what this is? Great work, Tony. All right. <laughs> so this is a pangolin. This is also the most heavily trafficked animal in the world. They are poached for their unique keratinous scales, which some East Asian medicinal practitioners claim have special properties. Um, a hint, they do not. Uh, <laughs> A few weeks ago, I was in South Africa learning more about these creatures, or more accurately, about what they eat, ants. You see, I'm an entomologist, a special kind of biologist that studies insects and understands the world from a slightly different perspective. For the past four years at Montana State University, I have been studying the insects behind ecosystems around the world, including those associated with thermal springs in Yellowstone National Park and the ant communities of unexplored forests in Madagascar. During this time, I've come to know of an inescapable truth. We're losing the most important battle of our lives. Our natural areas, our biodiversity hotspots, are being lost at an extraordinary rate. Threatened by habitat loss, climate change, invasive species, animals are being pushed to the brink of extinction. And without bold action, many will be lost in our lifetimes. But these challenges are so big, so mind-boggling, that we struggle to understand them and to understand what we as individuals can do about them. Here's a hint. Um, vote, like your future depends on it. But aside from voting for politicians or policies, I've realized that in order to get people to really understand the bigger picture, to make lasting change, we have to start small. And that's why I created the Ant Network. We are a science communication organization that uses ants and other insects to get people excited about the natural world and our efforts to study it, understand it, and to protect it. When I consider the most effective ways of changing the world, I tend to think about children. They're our future, we always say. And with their boundless curiosity and a willingness to ask why, they are best positioned to challenge the status quo as young leaders but I also worry about our children. They're growing up in an age where, for many, their greatest exposure to the natural world comes to them through an iPad, or if we're lucky, maybe Central Park Zoo. But as many of you know, that's an incredibly imperfect medium for experiencing something as transformative as the natural world. I've given nearly 50 presentations to schools and science camps across the Northwest, and every single time, the kids are absolutely enthralled by the wonderful world of insects. They cannot believe how much we have in common with ants. After all, they live in societies with complexity that rivals our own. They undertake incredible building projects, they grow their own food, and they can remind us of how important even the smallest of organisms can be to the functioning of ecosystems around the world. Of all the groups of animals on Earth, at least the ones that we can see with our naked eyes, the insects hold a disproportionate importance for keeping our ecosystems running. Three out of every four documented species on Earth are insects, and with 200 million of them for every human on our planet, we neglect them at our own peril. So at this point, you're probably thinking, Miles, I get it. Kids don't get outside enough. Bugs are cool. All right. I'm under no illusion that I can suddenly transplant the Amazon rainforest and all of its incredible animal life to the porch of a child living in Chicago. But I ask, what if we can bring a little slice of nature into our classrooms? What kind of difference could that make? The Ant Network is embarking on an ambitious mission to put an ant farm in every school across the United States. We believe that ants hold a unique potential for education and for the communication of science to the public. 
And with partners like the Blackstone Launchpad at MSU, we are making progress towards that goal. E.O. Wilson calls ants the little things that run the world. And he's not wrong. And by having live ant colonies in our classrooms, our children can learn about the natural world with hands-on experiments that promote critical thinking, creativity, and respect for living things. The responsibility that students will hold for the care of these animals will provide a clear path for them to accept their obligation as stewards of the natural world throughout their lives. And that sense of responsibility is what we are desperately missing right now. And it might just save the most vulnerable among us. Thank you. If you buy an illegal wildlife product here, you kill an endangered animal here. So please, don't do it. When the buying stops, the killing can too. Case closed.